Hi, how y'all doing? It's another episode of Truth Seeking Trucker. We're getting the book of Isaiah, chapter 60. Let's begin with some prayer. Father God, give us eyes to see and ears to hear. We may understand this book of Isaiah with all the hidden messages that we go through with a fine tooth comb so we better understand you and know how to love you and to warn the people if there's anything that needs to be said. And as we pray in Jesus Christ's holy name, Chapter 60. This is the restoration. Verse 60. Or chapter 60, verse 1. Arise, shine, for light, the light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. So who is the light? The light is the truth, the way, and the life. The light of the world is Jesus Christ. Two. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. And grass, oh, excuse me, and gross darkness, the people, or the, the growing of darkness for the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen above thee. So, let's go ahead and go what that means about the, the gross of darkness of the people. They're, they're, they're starving for the truth. So they're going to get, they're not sealed with the truth of God. They're going to get it from somewhere else. And um, the devil will appeal to them. Amos 8, 11 through 12. Behold, the days come, save the Lord God. I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. 12. And they shall wander from sea to sea. Sea is another representation of population or the large population of people. You can um, use scripture to interpret that in Revelation 17 15. Also used for large populations. And from north even to the east, they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. They shall wander from nation to nation. All right? So we got to understand the second coming. History repeats himself, but King Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun. And before the first coming, the minor prophets, they, and there's nothing minor about them. They're just shorter, I think, in, in length. Um, but in importance, they are important. That's why they're in the Bible. There was a thing, an event uh, that happened between that, the last prophet, and return of Jesus Christ. So they call it the 400 silent years. And I believe that's what's going to show as well. There's going to be silent years. I don't know if it's going to be 400 years. But there is going to be a time when the word of God is not going to be. Um, you won't be able to be as bold and open in the streets. And we're seeing that right now. We're getting. Uh, tribulation. Um, it's been going in other countries where people have to have to put their lives up on the line. But in America, this is something new for us, which is, in a way, we've had a blessing, and but we fell asleep and sat on our hands, you know, with that blessing. do now is we got to get, get up and dust ourselves off and push forward and pick up our cross. Verse 3 And the Gentiles shall come to thy light and the kings of brightness to the brightness of thy rising. So it's going to be one nation under God, one Israel one church of Christ for lift up thy eyes round about and see all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy son shall come from afar, and thy daughter shall be nursed as thy side. Five. And they shall see and flow together, and thy heart shall fear and be enlarged because of the abundance of the sea. Four nations shall be converted into thee. The forces of Gentiles shall come unto thee. So, 
if you remember in the book of Daniel, when Nebuchadnezzar saw that dream, and it was a giant stone that came from the sky and knocked down the, the, the feet and shattered the, that statue and a great mountain rose up from that stone. And that's the sign of God's kingdom coming from heaven. And all the other nations fell. And there was only one nation. The kingdom of, uh, of this earth is the kingdom of the Christ. Verse 6. The multitudes of camels shall cover thee. The drum dairies of Midian and Ephah. All from Sheba shall come, and it shall bring gold and incense, and they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. So, this is just a way of showing uh, what we're going to give is our love. We're going to give our obedience over our loyalty to Christ. This is, uh, you know, obviously we're seeing, going to see a way people are showing homage to the ruler true ruler of the land uh, I honestly don't believe that we're going to have any need of riches or of Christ in the sense that um, God's kingdom is going to be different than the way the, the money and the trading that we and the commerce that we have here so let me just continue verse 7 all the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee the rams of Nebuos, which is also um, the Arabic people or descendants of Ishmael, shall minister unto thee, and shall come up with acceptance of my altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. So God reaches out the gospel to whosoever will. All people and nations and tongues we bring it to. And, uh, God is not a respected person. It's hard enough to find people to listen to the gospel. Imagine if uh, only certain people could hear the gospel or not. But God's not like that. He's not a favorite person. He made us all. He's our creator. He made us the way he wanted us to be made. And he wants to uh, he wants to uh, sub in uh mingle and do things that like you know where we have a relationship you know like we're over here uh, the Lord's with us he's, a, he's going to be we're gonna we're gonna have to see him for who he is the gentle but strong the courageous but merciful the beautiful but yet, we have the fear of the Lord. And uh, it'll be a glorious day. Maybe I had the words a little tongue-tied earlier. Just forgive me, we'll push on a little bit. Let's say, Who are these that fly as a cloud, as the doves to the windows? And surely the isles shall wait for me, and the ships of Tarshish first. To bring thy sons from far, the silver and their gold, and them unto the name of the Lord thy God, and to the Holy One of Israel, because he hath glorified thee. So remember from the study of Ezekiel 26 and 27, ships of Tarshish, there was a, a, a commerce, a one world type government where these ships from Tyre, the island of Tyre, were going around and creating commerce with their trade. So now they're returning. Now they're returning, bringing, bringing their loyalty, their love. Again, I don't believe this is going to be literal. I think it's fig figuratively speaking. God's not broke. He doesn't need their silver and gold. But he does need their loyalty and their devotion to him. Verse 10. 
and the sons of strangers shall build up the walls, and the king shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I have smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. And that's why they call it the great and terrible day of the Lord. You're going two sides. What side will you be on? That's the question. I know what side I want to be on. I hope you do too, huh? Got plenty of room. Plenty of room over there. But I'm not the one who makes a decision. It's you and the Lord Jesus. Eleven, therefore my gates shall be open continually, and they shall not be shut day nor night, that man may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and they the kings may be brought. For the riches and the uh, wealth the question, you know, we have a we have a beautiful creator. It reminds, this kind of reminds me of Ezekiel forty, chapter forty, and, and up to forty eight with the Millennium Temple. Um, I really, I really haven't really dug into that. I did do a Ezekiel tapes, and I do understand that there is. Uh, structure there is um, a design for god's plan it's not a mystery it's not there are going to be no surprises um god's a uh, god of order verse 12 for the nations of kingdom shall kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish yea those nations shall be utterly wasted for the two sides kingdom of Kingdom of gods and kingdom of the world. 13. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir tree, the pine tree, the box together, to beautify the place of my sanctuary. So we've had references of people as trees, and we got some evergreens there. Um, we have the Cedars of Lebanon is actually not mentioned here, but Lebanon is. And there'll be people that are bringing them of all nations and tongues, bringing themselves together. Verse 14. And the sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come, bending unto thee. And all that despise thee shall bow down themselves down at the soles of thy feet. And they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. And um, again, when you're born, when you give yourself to the Lord, baptized and born again, you are grafted into the tree of Israel. And um, why does God give this? honor to his followers because they were able to see the truth and we don't we don't do this for honor but the Lord gives us honor we don't we don't reject it either because he knows that but we want them to know that we love him we are mess up at times and we're just eternally grateful that he died for us that we would receive that same Damnation with the angel was deserved for the angels that left the first estate that have caused this chaos and caused some men to choose the wrong choices to choose death. Let's continue Isaiah 60, verse 15. Where is thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee? I will make thee an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. 16. Thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles, and shall suck the breast of kings. So, everything that they've worked for is all coming back to God. Everything that People have 
try to build is coming back to the kingdom of heaven. And thou shalt know that I, the Lord, am the Savior and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. 17. For brass I will bring gold. And for iron I will bring silver. It will be increased. For wood, brass, and stones, iron, and I will also make thy officers peace and thy exactors righteous. So now we have peace amongst us. There will be no true peace until Christ comes back. The false Christ shall come first, claiming peace, peace, when there was no peace. It will come at a price. It will come at the price of your soul. The false Messiah comes first. Back on to this. But this is a rejoicing time in the book of Isaiah of when true Christ is with us. Verse 18, violence shall no more be heard. Oh, what a beautiful word. Let me say that again. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy wall salvation and thy gates praise. Prince of peace, the Holy One of Israel. Hosanna, Hosanna. 19. The sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. But the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God and thy glory. So remember, Christ is like, his face is like the sun. And when he's with us, we will, his brightness shall be our light. Figuratively and and Spiritually, literally. 20. Thy sun shall no more go down, neither shall the moon withdraw itself. For the Lord shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of thy mourning shall be ended. 21. Thy people also shall be righteousness, and they shall inherit the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. 22. A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in this in his time. So in his time, he shall come and make right what is wrong. And uh, it'll be a glorious time. Anyone out there that hasn't received the Lord, say a prayer. Get on your knees. And pray to the Lord to come into your heart and ask for forgiveness of sin, known and unknown. If you want to be specific, this is your, your time with the Lord. You go, you do what's on your heart. Also, to you're kneeling to the sovereignty, to his rule. He's your king. Get a chance after you've done your prayer in the name of Jesus to the Father in heaven. Then go find a church to get baptized. And then get into the Word of God. And don't stop every day. Do a little bit more. And that's what it takes. Be born again. Reject the works of the devil. Keep your nose clean. Walk the straight and narrow path. And you know, you may not be popular, but it'll be worth it. So I pray in Jesus Christ's name, amen. Take care, God bless you, and have a great rest of your night.